This is the Entrepreneur Unleashed Show, Episode 8 with Nancy Marmalejo. The Entrepreneur Unleashed. The Entrepreneur Unleashed. The Entrepreneurs Unleashed. The podcast where purpose and passion become revenue streams. Be real. Take a stand. Change lives. Here's your host, Patty Keating. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Unleashed Show. I'm your host, Patty Keating. Entrepreneurs everywhere are creating a new breed of business success. They're making their own rules, taking a stand for their purpose, leading through integrity, and making money by changing lives. Join me each week for compelling messages that will inspire and empower you to unleash your true purpose. My guest today is Nancy Marmalejo, and Nancy is this amazing woman who can see your genius and then show you how to position it in the marketplace. Oh my gosh, who doesn't want that, right? I'm so excited to bring her to you. I've known Nancy for a number of years, but just in the last year, I really got to know her personally and a little bit better. And what I love about her and what she does is she digs deeply with her clients. She really wants to know who they are as a person and how you can bring that out to connect it to your business in a way that creates success because your positioning, everything's based on who you are. And you guys know I love that. And so she's created this really amazing method called the talent and genius. And it's the intersection of, well, I'll let her tell you about it, but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it's about where the talent and genius come together, and then that's where your magic spot is. All right, so hi, Nancy. Hello, Patty. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm really excited to share your expertise with the audience. I know they're going to love what you're up to just as much as I do. I just wanted you to tell them a little bit about your business. I gave them the quick overview, but tell us about this talent and genius and what's going on in your business right now today. Sure. And it's nicknamed TAG, which is the acronym for talent and genius. Call it TAG, the intersection of talent and genius. And it's really about that unique cross-section of your skills and your life journey and all of the things you know how to do intersected with the natural strengths, the quirks, and the uniqueness that you'd have them whether you wanted them or not, just who you are. (laughs) And, you know, so many people just want to either copy the person next to them or, you know, do what's safe. And my message to everybody is don't do that. The minute you feel like you need to be safe is, is the huge message to you of it's time for you to step out, risk being vulnerable, risk being yourself, and you will find that people will respond and respond in a really positive way. Um, So as far as where things are right now, it's interesting um, because 10 years ago when I first started coaching, my focus was around uh, creativity and working with really creative entrepreneurs, just giving them a safe place to be their crazy creative selves and helping them get their best work out there. And in a sense, it feels like it's gone in a spiral. You know, it's, it's circled back around, but several levels higher in doing this work around talent and genius because it's back to that space of being able to provide people with a place where they can dig deep and understand who they are as a person, what drives them, give them a space for their creativity, but apply that in their business, particularly to how they position themselves, to how they come out in their marketing, the whole message and mission around the business. So it's really exciting. People from all over the world are responding very enthusiastically to the whole tag message. And I get emails from people practically every day saying, oh my gosh, you know, you are talking to me. So when I get that kind of response, I say, okay, this was great because I had to risk some vulnerability just even putting this out there myself a year ago when I put the tag brand out. So got to walk the talk. Yes. And you know, there is a shift happening. People are resonating with truth and, you know, people can cut through all the facade of marketing and, you know, customers are getting savvy. And so what you're doing is so timely as well. I'm not surprised people from all over the world are cheering. (laughs) Yes. So Nancy, what inspired you 10 years ago, you said to start your business? What inspired me 10 years ago was the birth of my daughter. Well, actually, she's 11 now. But even before that, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. 
My dad had his own business forever. I never once in my life saw my dad get up and go to work for anybody but himself. So it was ingrained in me that you could write your own ticket. You could write your own rules. I was never forced to adhere to any doctrine that said you must get a job with a big company and wait till retirement. My dad was so against that. He just said, you've got to be your own boss and have the freedom that comes with that. So he was really my mentor. And growing up, we all had to go to work for him. And so from an early age, I got a chance to experience what it was like to be, you know, working, to be part of an entrepreneurial family. So it was always in my blood. But then I became a teacher, actually, because that was in my blood also. That's kind of where my coaching stems from, is just my ability to spot the talent and genius inside of my students and bring that to the surface. But then when my daughter was born, I had this big awakening where I said, I don't want to go back to my teaching job. It's time for me to dig out that entrepreneurial gene and put it into use. So I just started a coaching business. I mean, literally, like I had a baby in my arms and a phone on my ear and I was coaching people. I didn't know, I wasn't sure what I was doing, but I just pulled it all together. And I said, you know, my intersection of talent and genius here, I've got this, this upbringing in an entrepreneurial family. I've got a very intuitive, creative side, which comes out in my coaching. Why don't I just blend it all together and put something up? And here it is. It's still around. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And my daughter has grown up in this business as well. So her role model is the same kind of a role model that I had when I was growing up. Just she's never seen me get up and go to work for anybody but myself. And she runs around in circles that most kids don't run around in. She, you know, goes to mastermind meetings and meets people. (laughs) Meets crazy women like me. (laughs) She meets crazy women like you. And she, I'll be so fascinated to see what happens in her life as she grows up. Yes, you're setting such a wonderful example for her. So Nancy, what challenges or obstacles showed up in your path as you were moving forward with your new entrepreneurial endeavor? Well, I think the usual suspects come up. It's that work-life balance. That was probably the first one. And there were a series of events that happened. First of all, I needed to figure out how to juggle the motherhood and the the business, which I ultimately got a, you know, just said, okay, here's how I'm going to do it. And so that's always been a component. I'm always really honest with my clients to say, look, sometimes things come up or I might have a sick child and we might not be able to meet today. So, you know, I'm just really upfront and honest about my values. I do put my family first and I work with clients who have an understanding that every now and then something might come up. So we're cool on that. But as far as having, you know, any challenges outside of the just the personal work-life balance, when I first began, I was really looking for role models And I didn't really find any role models who were coming from the exact place that I was coming from. So here I was, I'm creative, I'm kind of out of the box, I come from this educational background, I'm Latina, I've got all these things, I'm funny, you know, all all these little pieces I'm putting together and all of the role models that I saw in the coaching world, whether it was personal life coaching or business coaching, it just seemed like everybody was kind of a different version of the same thing. (laughs) the navy blue blazer the arms crossed looking over the shoulder headshot like oh (laughs) i can't do that or the backlit purple fluffy sweater glamour shot i'm like that's not gonna work you know it was funny because when i first started out i had a coach who said to me that i was just i was a little too out there and i was a little too off the wall and i'm thinking what's what is off the wall about celebrating yourself. Every now and then I'd throw in a little Spanglish word. And and I was just so grateful that I had the sense not to listen to that advice and to understand that for that person, that was a code that worked for her. But for me, that wasn't something I wanted to adhere to. So I had to just keep struggling along and dealing with people saying like, I don't get it. And I'm like, okay, that's all right. But I bet you in three years you will, because I'm a bit of an innovator. And you know, next thing you know, people come back going, oh, I get it now. It's like, all right, cool. So, so much of it has to do with just really staying true to yourself, even when it seems unpopular, even when it seems weird. That's part of the vulnerability that I encourage people to take. It's like, don't be afraid to be the weirdo in the room. It's, it's a-okay. 
Yeah. Would you say that's the big lesson that you learned in going through those challenges to really stay true to yourself? Oh, yes. You have to. You have to. I had people tell me, you know, downplay the fact about you're a mom. Nobody cares about that. Well, you know what? It really galvanizes a lot of people who relate to that. So I'm I'm all about the polarize and galvanize approach where you just are able to be so true to yourself that the people who get it are going to come to you like a magnet and the people who it's just not it's not for them well great I believe in abundance there's somebody else who can serve that person and serve them better so god bless them and you know the people who come to you who have a similar value system who honor children and would want you to stay you know to stay with your daughter and not be on the phone during their session would have no problem rescheduling those people are going to rave about you because you're ideal for them. They value who you are in the market. So it's an upward spiral. Yeah, it is. And I think we have values all around us that we put first. There are people who have values around fitness where they exercise a certain time of day or they're going to go for a run and you cannot contact them during that time. Or travel and vacation are very important to them, so they will be gone for the month of August. I mean, we all have the ability to put our values first and to live around them. My daughter just presented a very obvious value for me that was able to, you know, become like a boundary in a sense. But we all have things in our lives that we can stick with. We don't have to give them up. And that also celebrates our talent and genius because that's part of who you are. You know, you're a person who stands up for something. So tell us what you're passionate about right now. Oh my gosh. I am so passionate about just the whole talent and genius concept. And especially like in the last month, it's like I've fallen in love with it all over again. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. I, I launched the talent and genius brand in the summer of 2013. And it was, you know, just that whole launch and growth and getting everything out there. And then it started to settle down. The dust settled. We're in it. And I just said, okay, now that we're not crazy busy, what do I see here? And I started seeing new layers, new levels of this work. I was just reading the book, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Love that book. And he talks about being in your zone of genius. And as I'm reading it, I'm like jumping up and down saying, yes, yes, yes. What he's teaching people to apply to relationships and in their life, I'm saying, yes, now let's take that and apply it to how you position yourself in your business. I love that. So I just feel like everywhere around me are these messages around genius and people are talking more and more about it. Maybe I'm just noticing it because I'm using those words right now, but it's so exciting that people are getting on this page of working from their strengths, working from their genius and releasing themselves from doing the things that are not in their zone of genius. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> Your time has come. They caught up with you, Nancy. I told you in three years, it'll all make sense. So what's your vision for the next five years? Well, my vision for the next five years, gosh, that, you know, a five-year vision has always been a bit of a challenge for me because so many opportunities pop up in the moment that take me on a deeper, more exciting path. So I don't want to limit myself by putting a five-year vision and sticking to it and ignoring new opportunities that come up. So I would say just, you know, for me, within five years, I've got to write a book. I mean, I've been saying this for <laughs> years and years and years. Got to write a book. You have inspired me to have a podcast. So I'm totally down for that. Awesome. I had a podcast in the early days when podcasting first came out, like 2006, 2007. Uh -huh. And I gave it up and because I was just, you know, I had too many things going on. But now watching you and how much fun you're having, I'm like, I want to have fun like that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you're going to be my first guest. I'm announcing Yay. it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll do that. So a podcast and a book, good things for us to look forward to. We want to know what's, what's next coming down the pike since you're an innovator. You got the inside scoop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's put podcast and book. I've said it out loud. I've said it publicly. I cannot go back and I've got full five years to do it. <laughs> like on four years and 360 days, I'll probably sit down and say, okay, I'll do it. I don't think so. I think it'll happen probably in half of the time. Let's say. Yes. <laughs> 
So I have a question about you personally growing. What's the best advice that you ever received? The best advice I ever received... You know, in all honesty, the best advice, it can sound kind of corny because it's a, you see it on bumper stickers and things like that, but it's let go and let God. That is my code for living. And what I have found is that when I stress myself out trying to solve a problem, trying to figure something out, trying to make people be different than who they are, I can drive myself crazy. I fall out of my genius zone. I fall out of my happiness place and when I turn it over and then suddenly something shifts and something changes and I realize that the only way things could change is by me getting my paws off of it. Those are my words to live by. What personal growth have you experienced as a result of your 10-year journey? You know, it's interesting. Business puts you into a phase of personal growth whether you want to or not. Yes. If you want to learn about all of your issues, just go open a business. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> it's like, are, do you suck at boundaries? Oh, well, look at that. Your business is showing it. And, you know, everything from organization and time management to communication. And then you have a business where you market yourself online and you've got an even more interesting mix of lessons that come up because I market myself. I'm the face of my company. So if I had issues about what do people think of me or will they like me? Or what if everybody makes fun of me and I become one of those YouTube videos that they pass around and it goes viral because I'm such an idiot? You know, if you sit down and worry about that kind of stuff, you'll never go anywhere. So there's a certain form of resilience that we have. We put on our Teflon coat of armor and we get out there and we put ourselves out there and we put our messages out there. And, and you understand that, you know what, there are some people who won't resonate with with it. But that doesn't mean that they hate you as a person and you're bad. It just means that it just wasn't what they needed at that time. In the meantime, there are tons of people out there who've been praying for this to enter their lives, who've been praying for the solution that you offer. And if you hadn't stepped out there, if you hadn't have said something, then their transformation and change as a person would never take place. So, We can't always stay stuck inside of our own fears. We have to put it into perspective of how our role as entrepreneurs is really stepping out as a change maker. Whether you help people balance their books or you help people find their soulmate, you are a change maker. And you can't do that by being quiet. You do have to get out there. You do have to have something to say. And people need to know what you are a genius at. So I think that this type of business where you're a solo professional or you're marketing yourself online, it ups the ante on personal growth because you get to confront all kinds of good stuff. Would you say that for you personally, it's been about allowing yourself to be vulnerable? Definitely that for myself, allowing myself to be vulnerable, but more importantly, showing other people that they can too. Mm. I'm pretty brave when it comes to public speaking or, you know, doing video and things like that. But I know a lot of people who are terrified of that. So I just say, look, there was a time I was pretty scared when I did my very first video and put it online. I was so afraid. And the first time I ever gave a talk, my my hands were sweating so badly. I was just a nervous wreck. (laughs) (laughs) But then you get out there and you do it a couple of times. And and next thing you know, they can't shut you up. Exactly. That's like my podcast. I was so nervous. I don't know how many takes I did on the very first one doing just the opening introduction. Which, you know, and it's funny because at, at some point we just say to ourselves, good enough, <laughs> it's, move it's on. It's all fine. It's all fine. So, and if you don't do it, people miss out, like you said, you know, because then you get this good feedback of people saying, thank you so much. And, you know, I think sometimes after I've done something, you know, what if I had held back and not done that? I wouldn't have helped these people because of my own ego. Yeah. What if I had looked like an idiot? You know, all of those things that we say to ourselves keep us down. They keep us out of our talent and genius. And it's interesting because I did some work with a woman about a year or two ago, and she took me through this process where ultimately I envisioned myself standing on top of a mountain giving a message to the world. And I was really surprised what came out of my mouth. And what it was is it's okay to be vulnerable. You need to take the risk of being vulnerable in order to grow. 
And she's like, you need to put that into your business. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I was afraid to say that. I did. I was suddenly afraid to sound like a weirdo and like, oh, everybody be vulnerable. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, oversharing and TMI. So I just meditated on it for a year and just let it, myself grow into it and work with it. And now it's so crystal clear what it is. And it all, you know, it all comes out in the tag work. So it's been really wonderful to just trust, okay, I got this message. I'm not sure what to do with it, but let me hold on to it. Let me just not force it, but let it sink in. And then one day it blooms. And I love to take fast action, but I also think that premature action can set you back as well. So you know when the time is right. That's where the let go and let God stuff comes in. So this is the tools and resource question. (laughs) What gadgets or tools do you use to make your life easier? Gosh, I just unclogged a drain with this thing called the zip it, but I don't know if we want to really go there. It was gross. However, for my business, there's a website called Central Desktop. Uh I love it. It's cloud project management system. I guess kind of like Basecamp, but I really like it. And and we run our whole company out of there. It's It's got all of our processes and procedures. It's got a calendar and things like that. So that's one on the technical end. But you know what? I was pondering this question ahead of time. And what popped up for me was YouTube because I can find out anything from YouTube. You can find out how to edit audio if you ever find out that you need to edit audio. You can get public speaking tips. You can learn how to hypnotize somebody. You can learn how to help a, seal up a wound. You can learn how to bake gluten-free strawberry cupcakes. I mean, it's like anything and everything I need. My friend fixed his washing machine by watching a YouTube video. <laughs> I was putting together an Ikea bed one time and I was right in the middle of it, ready to cry. I don't know if you've ever had that experience. I'm like, why did I do this? Why didn't I hire somebody? And I went to YouTube and I found somebody who was walking me through. And it just, it was like, for me, the comfort of knowing somebody was there. So that is my absolute favorite tech tool. I love that. Nancy, my college student son, who's 19, was home for spring break two weeks ago And he cleaned the garage and put his car in the garage and got all his stuff organized and his car wouldn't start. And he was like, oh my gosh, the starter's out. So mom came in and did a YouTube search. (laughs) (laughs) And the first thing the guy told me was, make sure it's fully in gear. And I went out and said, Spence, is the car in gear? He moved the the gear shift just a little bit, the car started up. So, Oh, see? I'm totally on board with YouTube. It saved you a tow truck and a trip to the mechanic. So what resources as far as books, podcasts, or blogs do you recommend? Well, you know, I mentioned this book that I love called The Big Leap. Yes. By Gay Hendricks. I love that book. I had such insights into myself by reading that book and also insights into other people. I am a serial reader. I will buy four or five books at a time. And what I do is I speed date them. I read the first chapter of each one and then I decide which one is really reaching out to me. And then I'll stick with that. Or sometimes I just sort of run around with all of them. (laughs) I think about when we're in high school or college, you know, we juggled five, six subjects at a time. We were reading chemistry and reading English and doing our math. So I don't really have a problem reading five books at a time. And I feel just as focused, but I I am completely immersed in that big leap. And then the gifts of imperfection by Brene Brown. I love that as well. I just really am into books right now that are talking about the inner journey and the vulnerabilities and how to bring that out. And I think that it serves me in the work that I do with clients and it also serves me as a person and it serves my business as well as my life. So big thumbs up. Oh, thank you. We'll put those in the show notes so you guys can go grab the link to Amazon and download these books or buy a hard copy, right? I read paper books. I can't do the Kindle or the digital books. Those drive me crazy. But I'm an old-fashioned dog-eared underline right in the margins. There's something about that, the experience of it. I love it. I love underlining quotes. I love, you know, writing in the margins, all of that good stuff. Nancy, if you were to do it all over again, what would you tell your younger self? Oh, my gosh. I think it's funny. I, you know, wear sunscreen would have been the first thing. (laughs) 
<laughs> when I look back, uh, what would I tell my younger self? I would just tell my younger self, just keep going one step at a time. Just keep moving forward. Take the next indicated step. I don't want to mess with the future by tinkering too much by telling my younger self, you know, you should have done this or you should have done that. If you, you remember the movie Back to the Future? Yes. So Marty McFly goes back in time and then his mom gets a crush on him. <laughs> That's right. And, and they show his, like, there was, a, there was a picture he had of his family and, like, people are disappearing. Oh, no, my family's going to disappear because he was altering the course of the future. So I don't want to tell my younger self too much other than just take the next indicated step because it's going to take us where we need to be right now. And I'd rather look at where we are right now and where we're going than look back at where we were and what we did. That's great advice. Nancy, thank you so much for being with us today. You shared some golden nuggets. We'll get those in the show notes. And uh, I know people are going to love your advice and, and just who you are. You're so much fun to be around. I love this show. I have listened to your other episodes. I absolutely love love them. And I love your enthusiasm for what you're doing. I think you are clearly doing your genius work with this podcast. So I want to congratulate you on such a job well done and the great value that you're giving people. Thank you, Nancy. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Entrepreneur Unleashed show. If you did, please go to pattykeating.com and let me know what you're up to this year in your business. While you're there, be sure to grab your copy of Five Quick Ways to Share Your Expertise. <laughs> 